Here at the Kennedy Space Center, they continue to process the payloads for the SpaceX 4 launch. And today we're going to talk about one of those payloads. It's called Micro 8, and it's studying yeast in space. Joining me now is Sheila Nielsen. She is the principal investigator for the Micro 8 uh, project, and also Fatih Kauria, and he is from the Ames Research Center. You're the project scientist. Thanks you, you both for joining us today. First of all, tell us about Micro 8. Thanks, Lori. Micro 8 is our opportunity to evaluate how yeast or cells in general respond to the microgravity environment. In our case, we're working with the yeast Canada albicans, which is an opportunistic pathogen. It causes the superficial and usually easily treatable infections like thrush and fungal nails, but it can be a, much more of a concern for some individuals. So Micro8 is an extension of Micro6 that we launched two years ago, and we took what, what we learned from that experiment and are generating um, additional experiments to sort of take that research one step farther on micro eight. Why do we study this? Does it benefit us here on Earth? Does it benefit future space flight? Why do we study it? Right, well I actually think of the experiment sort of as a three-fold process. The first and, and most basic scientifically is to understand how, ye how cells in general respond to extreme environments which microgravity certainly is an extreme environment. And that just gives us some, some general information on cell behavior and cell function. The next level is to understand how potential pathogens could affect flight crew, especially as we look forward to longer terms um, in space. And then the third piece, as you mentioned, was what does this tell us about the organisms on Earth? And because this yeast is a potential pathogen and does cause disease in, in immunocompromised people, people who've had surgeries or have diseases that compromise their immune response, it can teach us a lot about how those organisms function within parts of the body that we can't easily access and then allow us to understand the disease process and develop therapies potentially to, to improve outcomes of that. And so, Fatih, the um, Ames Research Center is responsible for these micro payloads. What, what is the interest there with, with Ames, and, and why, do, why do you guys want to be involved with this? And how does it work with BioServe and Sheila's from Montana State University? Tell us how that all works. Yes, so the uh, Space Biology Project at NASA Ames Research Center uh, manage uh, all the micro payloads. And so those are investigations that more or less follows the recommendation uh, from the National Research Councils. Uh, in 2011, they pub publish uh, a decadal survey, which more or less is being used by NASA as to what type of research needs to be conducted on the International Space Station per se. And so at Ames, we more or less overseeing the project. And as you mentioned, uh, BioSelf Space Technology at the University of Colorado in Boulder is the pilot developer. All right, and Sheila, you talked about, we've learned a little bit so far. Tell us what we've learned. Okay, we, we flew on SpaceX One, which was our first opportunity as well as, as space expeditions. and. That gave us a lot of groundwork. We, we found that the organisms were a little bit more resistant to micro antimicrobials as we had found in our ground-based studies. Uh, we found, we, we were able to compare their growth rates to those experiments that we were doing comparably on ground. Um, we also found out that we could bring live samples back and test them at our home lab, That those samples that had been exposed to flight. And so there was a lot of the basic information that we were able to, to garner from that first flight. And so on this one, we're adding a second antimicrobial and a couple of new analyses, sort of as an extension of those initial studies. You've been here a few days now. Tell us we about have. the work you're doing right now to get this payload ready. Okay. Uh, the first part of our team arrived in the middle of last week. The second half of the team arrived on Friday and basically we set up the lab that was in very good shape for us already. Uh, we had a lot of equipment that we brought from home, basically got all of the equipment sterilized, media made, and then on Saturday what happens here is we actually build the experiments within the hardware provided by a BioServe and it's at least a two-step if not a three-step process and on Saturday we started building those experiments and the next two stages of that building process will be much more closely juxtaposed to launch. So we'll spend 30 plus maybe days in space then come back, right? Right, so this experiment will be, it has a couple of growth windows while on the International Space Station, but the experiment will stay there for the duration of SpaceX 4 and return on SpaceX 4. More micros, Fatih? Yes, hopefully. Uh, okay. I mean, uh, we're expecting uh, uh, Micro 9 uh, to come up on SpaceX 6. Uh, 
Okay. So we'd be uh, actually also using the same model organism, which is yeast, but it would be different uh, type of objectives and uh, scientific, uh, I guess, investigation. All right. Well, it sounds like interesting work, interesting investigations, and we can't wait to learn more from you. Thank you both for joining us.